Hi everyone, I'm Pranoti, host of Under the Microscope. This series is brought to you by the Real Scientists Nano team. Our goal is to provide a platform where scientists can communicate their work and interact with the public. With that in mind, every week we introduce you to a scientist working in the field of materials or nanoscience, who tweets from the Real Scientists Nano Twitter account, which is realsci underscore nano. Hi everyone, my name is Pranoti. I am your host of the End of the Microscope series, podcast series, podcast series. And today we have a very, very special guest with us. Uh, please welcome Sarah Hernandez Merjias. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, Sarah is a senior researcher at the Madrid Institute of Advanced Studies in Nanosciences. Um, of course, in Madrid, in Spain, in Europe, which is on Earth. And Sarah also recently joined the Real Scientist Nano team, the Science Talk and the Real Scientist Nano team. So welcome, Sarah. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Happy to be here. Um, I guess in this podcast, it's also very special for me. So thank you for inviting me. Of course, we are, we are very happy to have you here. So let's dig in. Um, could you explain your research to us in super simple words, please? Mm -hmm. So uh, I do mainly research in light conversion and uh, trying to use light as an energy source. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm doing is design uh, photosystems that I can tune uh, on demand mm -hmm. and try to optimize them just to harness the power of the light as an energy source for different applications, including photochemistry, nanophotonics, depends on the system that I built. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Wow. That sounds so cool. Okay. I have so many questions. Um, how did you get to uh, be the senior researcher? Like now the research that you're doing, could you tell us a bit about your research journey, like the career journey so far? Mm -hmm. So um, I am physicist. And I'm very proud of being physicist, but also I'm very interdisciplinary. So when I finished my my bachelor, I just needed to choose a path and I decided to do a PhD. And I heard about new materials and biomaterials, so I just uh, decided to go there. And it ended up being very, very much molecular biology. So very far from anything that I study in my bachelor. So it was a big change, um, a bit shift. So uh -huh. I did all my PhD in protein design, and I was building nanosystems with mm -hmm. with cool tune and the nanoscale, and depends on the nanostructure, they change the microscopic properties. Uh -huh. So after my PhD, I so I enjoy a lot learning this molecular biology part, but I really felt that I wanted to know more into mechanistic studies and this kind. So not only build the material, but also study the mechanism. So mm -hmm. I decided to proceed with the postdoc, but now more focus in time resolved spectroscopy, which is a technique that allows you to know a bit the light conversion mechanism in systems. So I did a postdoc of six years now, so quite a long postdoc already. Uh, in in laser spectroscopy and time resolve spectroscopy with different systems. Mm -hmm. And now recently, I'm super happy because I get this grant that, um, a, a grant as a junior leadership. So I will start my own group in October, combining these both worlds, more the molecular biology and spectroscopy uh, in one team. So we are going to be working in in this light conversion mechanisms in engineer with engineer photosystem based on proteins. So it's very nice. And yes, go on. Yeah, related with the with this journey is very interesting to me. Something because when I finished my bachelor, I I was considering to be a nuclear physics. So I really was into nuclear physics. But then I said, um, this uh, sounds very cool, but also it sounds like you are going to be abroad. In, uh, in different countries and everything. And I was not feeling ready for that. And I was a bit naive because then I've been in Sweden, I've been in the Netherlands, and really I'm very happy that I had this super international journey 
that I met many people of different countries and I really learned. But it's something also curious from the journey, how you make decisions depends on what you feel that is going to be about, but then it's completely different. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's really interesting that you wanted, you considered being a nuclear physicist, but then you decided against it, but then ended up being a traveling scientist. It's just, that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing. So um, about your current research which with the, uh, with the with the spectroscopy and the molecular biology, like with the molecules, um, are there any specific molecules that you are working with, or is it like the whole range? Like at the end, I would like to know what is your favorite molecule if you're working with a few. <laughs> that's that's where I'm headed here. <laughs> so uh, I'm working mainly with uh, organic dyes. So these dyes are um, are made by or, uh, aromatic rings. So mm -hmm. the um, depends on the how many aromatic rings they have they have uh, the, these electrons are like uh, moving around all the molecule so depends on the on the structure you can have different absorption properties so i don't have any favorite molecule because i use depending on so depend on what system i'm using and depends on the application that i want to go mm -hmm. i use in different molecules for example i use both dp uh, this is kind of molecules that i'm using that is very interesting because you can tune um, the structure to have different, like to have different properties. But also uh, one of my favorite now is pyrene molecule. This is done by four benzene groups. That is the one that I'm working with now. This is very interesting one because it, when you excite your molecule to the excited state, then have different decay pathways. So now we are just um, making proteins in order to tune this pathway selectively. So I will say body P and pyrene, perhaps for now, but uh, let's see in the future. So you do have favorites. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. So so if I understand this correctly, uh, if I understand you correctly, so there are these molecules or like a bunch of molecules and then you shine laser on them and whatever comes out or comes back or comes out, is what you've studied that's the spectroscopy part is that a, a fair way of saying it and then of course it's more complicated but if we have to oversimplify there's a molecule you shine laser on it and then see what happens yeah that's that's it so uh, what you would do with, basically with the laser is you you excite your molecule so this molecule takes the energy of the laser mm -hmm. so it goes to the excited state and is from there so the light conversion is basically converting the light, this light that uh, is reaching the molecule to another state. It can be electrons or it can be a photon with another energy. So what you observe is how from when you excite your molecules is how it evolves during time until the, the end step. So you are you are able to to see these processes and you can be so I work with different lasers. One of them is in the femtosecond range, so it's really taking one second and dividing one billion, <laughs> one billion times. So it's like quite fast processes. And yeah. then I have another one, so I have another laser in the nanosecond range, so it's just a 10 power to minus nine mm -hmm. seconds time. So you work in this as a um, range time. Uh -huh. So what so with the femto laser, which is 10 to the power minus 15 uh, seconds, so one divided by a billion, one yeah. billionth of, uh, of, of, of a second, with that you would be able to understand that's, that's where the time resolve part comes in, like what happens uh, on a femtosecond level in the molecule. Mm -hmm. And with the nano laser, it's like what happens on a nanosecond level. What what yeah. does this happen? How do the how does the molecule react or what happens to the molecule? So that kind of information, right? Yeah. So the thing is that you have some processes that are very fast. So for example, uh, all the um, the relax fast re thermal relaxation in the um, all the thermal relaxation in the molecule. Also things that happens intramolecularly and interact very quickly with the proteins. This happen in the femtosecond time scale. So mm -hmm. it's are very quick processes, but there are other processes that, for example, rely on interaction, like diffusional processes, for example, these kind of things that are slower because you are not already in the molecule, but you are interacting with different molecules, these kind of things requires time, 
So it's, it's fast still comparing with our life because it's nanosecond, but yeah. it's, it's a slower processes. So you can uh, define all these two processes, like things that happen in the two rings of uh, time. That is so cool. Oh my God, that is so cool. Wow. Oh my God. That is so cool. Okay, so so now I want to ask you this because you work with molecules, you work with lasers, you work with these super fancy lasers. But before I ask that, which lasers are we talking about here? Are we talking about green, red, blue, or is there like a range of uh, lasers? So uh, our laser generates um, a light uh, in the infrared, so 1,075 or something like that. But then you can tune this one, so you have your fundamental, but then you depends. On, so the, uh, usually when you have a light, you have also different harmonic that you can just tune uh, with uh, some crystals. So mm -hmm. there are some crystals that are not that has are called non-linear crystals. So you mm -hmm. can you can choose the fundamental, the first harmonic, the second harmonic. So you can go from uh, one, this one uh, in the fundamental, then choose also, for example, um, around 532. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is more in the vis uh, visible part. Mm -hmm. And then go for the UV, for example, 355 nanosecond. So this is basically the light that you can uh, achieve from the laser. But then we have also a very a different uh, systems that are composed but by different combination of crystals that allow us to convert this light in any light that you want in the visible range, UV range and infrared. Mm -hmm. So any light that you need, you can, so any light that you need to pump your molecule, you can achieve with this kind of system. It's, uh, they are called OPOs, NOPAS, this kind of, so they are, combination of crystals mm -hmm. um, that just basically depends on how they interact with the light. They convert a, a wavelength to another wavelength and you can tune them to achieve the wavelength that you have. Because of course, so there are some molecules absorbing in the UV. There are other molecules absorbing in the visible. There are other processes that you want to know that absorbs, for example, in the infrared. So you want to have a range um, of, of light to of probe. Light, Okay, okay, wow, that sounds so cool. Because during my PhD, I think I worked with a red laser and I, no, did I work? I think I worked with blue and green. So 488 and 532. Uh, I think 532 is green, non blue. Yeah. Uh, I, I get confused now. Wow. I yeah. should remember these no, things. It's very interesting because you can't really, so I also when I was learning about lasers and this kind, so this kind of uh, tuning. I feel that is uh, really, really interesting. And there are, the problem is that sometimes they are not very efficient because mm -hmm. you have a lot of loss in each crystal. So if you put many combination of crystals, if you really need to tune your your uh, light, you need to put uh, a lot of combination. You lost a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need higher power. So there is a lot of research on these kind of materials that tune the laser uh, lights and these kind of things. For example, in my group, there are some people working in the in lacing. So they do, for example, different cavities that can have this uh, different laser properties. Mm -hmm. So like this, you can have more tunable lasers and it's very relevant for, for example, for me that I want to understand other kind of systems. Right, right. That makes complete sense. Wow. So it, it sounds to me, Sarah, that you have been involved in a lot of interesting research projects or experiments. Um, if you have to pick one research project that you are most proud of, <laughs> could you pick one and explain it to us in simple words in the section we call In Other Words? So I will choose the one that I'm working now. Indeed, now I'm not in Spain, I'm in Sweden now, just finishing that project. Okay. So it will be published soon, I hope. Uh, so in this project, so I, what I like in this project is that it's the first time that I really mix the molecular biology with a spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. So basically what we have is this firing molecule that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so we embedded this, this uh, firing molecule in a simple protein. This protein we can tune like at the nanoscale because we know exactly the structure and the what amino acids we can tune. Mm -hmm. So what we observe is that just tuning a single amino acid in the protein, we can induce uh, some 
quadrupolar interactions, so these are electrostatic interactions, in order to tune the structure of the protein. So just when amino acid tunes completely the structure of the protein, and then we can do a selective light conversion. So going, for example, to have more uh, charged state. So this pairing, when it gets excited, it decays with three different pathways. One is forming electrons, like charged states. Another is forming uh, one spin state different from the excited state, so it's the triplet state. And another is just emitting fluorescent. So what we observe, so in the planar molecule, this conversion is not selective. So it can go, it has a quantum yield uh, for each of them. So you are losing energy. Imagine that you want electrons. At the end, you are losing energy there because you have also the other path. So with the protein and tuning the structure, we can select uh, one path or another. So favoring, for example, charge formation, forming a, a fluorescent or forming the triplet state. And it's very cool, I think. It is, yeah. It sounds really, really cool. So this was a project that is in Sweden, you mentioned? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I started here, I, I think here two years as a postdoc, uh -huh. and I started here this project. It was, um, yeah, I started here uh, the project, and now I, we are finishing. And I will follow my career path through that path of modifying proteins to do selective light conversion. So the idea started here. That is so cool. So you must be really, really proud of this. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that. I, I hope it will be published soon uh, so that we can all read it. Will you be able to talk about it a bit when you are taking over the Twitter account? Uh, repeat again, please. Can you, can, would you be able to talk about this project when you are taking over the Twitter account as well? I know the research is not published. But ah, I, I think that is fine. That is fine. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's really cool. So, Sarah, um, I mean, research is one big part of being a scientist, but what else do you like about being a scientist other than the research itself? So, one thing that I like is that, uh, so, okay, you can really do research in things that you like it, right? But I like to do it with a team. So, one thing that I like is that you can choose what person you want to involve in your team and what together in that project that you like it. So this is one thing that I like it. Mm -hmm. Also, so I, I really like to do this networking and all this international environment that we are exposed on mm -hmm. when you are in, when you are a scientist, mm -hmm. that perhaps if you are working in a small company in Spain, you have not. And you I, I think that it really enriches you as a person to mm -hmm. be in this national environment right and um, i think that this is my my main favorite thing so building a team and this international environment that you are involved in ah that's really cool and i hope you will soon be able to start like you will be able to start building your team I, i'm super excited for you for uh, about it about that part of your career and that part of your personality as well um Zara, I, I hope your research experience has been wonderful and will continue to be wonderful in the future as well. I mean, it sounds to me that it's worked out very well for you. Uh, and also congratulations. It was, it was challenging, but... Uh... Of course, yes. So regarding the challenges, um, if you had three wishes to improve your research experience, what would you ask for? And I'm not promising anything. Sorry. <laughs> So I think that um, one thing that I would like is to invest more time with people that inspire me. So sometimes the researchers don't have time, like senior researchers don't have time to talk with you and these things. But I, I would like to have more time to sit with them and just discuss about research, but also about life. Life, I mean, also what path they took. So have this this kind of conversation mm -hmm. with the with people that I consider that are um, inspiring. So this was the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I will ask will be, so now I start to do networking, but I would like to have the chance to network more because I really enjoy this collaboration. I think that they are really important part of the research also, like having a collaboration that we can you can put all the expertise together. So I would like to have a bigger network uh, working on that still. Uh -huh. And then the third thing, I think that uh, I would love to have uh, a stable funding. Uh -huh. so 
forever. So this will be my three wishes. Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay. So to be able to speak with people uh, that inspire you, um, stable funding, I think that's, that's, that's just, yeah, that's very, very, very important. And more opportunities to network. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Um, and I'm oh, pretty, sorry. Oh, sorry, no, say. Yeah, no, I, I was just saying, I, 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 these are quite realistic wishes, to be honest. Um, and I hope they will come true soon enough. Um, so, so, Sarah, uh, this has been wonderful talking to you, learning about your research, learning about you as a person, as a scientist. So what can the followers expect in the week that you will be taking over the Real Scientist Nano Twitter account? So uh, you mean what, um, what they are going to have here? Yes. What are you going to tell us about when you are tweeting from the account? This one, I... Um, about your research, about your career, about your papers, um, about... Yeah, oh, okay. So, yes, in my Twitter account, yeah, I, they they will know about my, my research, about um, my career a bit. Also, I tweet a lot some advices uh, for young people and mm -hmm. also some wishes. I used, to, I used to tweet about some wishes also. Uh -huh. um, I like the, I think that this one. Aha, uh -huh. okay, that sounds cool. And I hope that we will get some nice pictures from your lab and from your institute and from Madrid awesome. as well. Uh, it has been my wish since a long time to visit Madrid and lots of other parts of Spain as well. So um, yeah, I look forward to having you on Real Scientist Nano. Thank you very much, Sarah, for speaking with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you for hosting me. Thank you for listening. I also want to thank my team, Johanna, who is our news editor and curator liaison, Suenya, who is our podcast engineer and curator liaison, Lucia, who is our media and website coordinator, and myself, Pranoti, being the owner of the Science Talk and host of Under the Microscope. To know more about us, visit our website, thesciencetalk.com, and follow us on Twitter at realsci underscore nano.